Hi, this is Jim Janice of DePaul's Information Services Instructional Technology Support Group. I'm going to cover seven tips for better distance learning that you can use with Blackboard or Desire to Learn. Here's what we're going to cover. Class pictures, first page makeover for Blackboard in particular, introductory video, organizing your course by two-week units, using short embedded videos, using engagement exercises to get your students really engaged with your material and to seek anonymous feedback throughout the entire course. Let's cover each one in turn. Here's what a class picture looks like. I compose this just from the ID card pictures that are accessible on your class roster in Campus Connect. Put it up on the first page instead of a banner as one collage. The advantage shows all the students who else is in the class just as if it were meeting in person. Even if this is the only place they see each other, it's an excellent way to make the class have some presence rather than just being isolated students who don't see each other. You might be able to do the same thing in a larger class with a separate JPEG that you post instead of here at the banner just as a separate item, perhaps a separate page, a separate button. In the College of Digital Media, CDM, you can do a rapid makeover of your Blackboard appearance by replacing the Announcements button with a Welcome button that just points to a URL, which is your online syllabus. In other colleges that don't have online syllabus systems, you can compose a graphic, park it on a server, and have that come up as the first thing that students see. Radically changing the appearance of Blackboard, modernizing it, and customizing it to whatever way your department or your specialty within the department would like. First page makeover, you do this way. Go to the control panel, hide the announcements button, and create the external link named Welcome, assigning it the URL of whatever you'd like to have appear first. That's really all it takes to do it. If that external URL is a JPEG housed on a server, that's what's going to appear, and we can give you the appropriate size in pixels so that it comes up just neatly filling the screen. Introductory video. Here's a video that I recorded just using the webcam on a laptop into YouTube, and I parked 45 seconds to three minutes worth of chat out there from the instructor in the course in this case me, and I parked it here at the announcements introducing myself to the students. I could put this anywhere on any page within Blackboard and it can warm the students up to your presence in a way that text or audio alone can't do. You can also do this throughout the term as a means of talking about assignments or any particular topics. Next point, organize your course by two-week units. Notice the buttons that I customized here in Blackboard. I broke a 10-week course into five two-week units and even managed to put the dates up on the button. Within each unit, everything is self-contained in one web page. You can certainly do this using Blackboard. You can customize it in this way. You're not stuck with the buttons that come to you in the default course setup. And here's what one of those units looks like. I've pointed here to the first unit in the course and the big red arrow on the right indicates how you can scroll down this page and see what's going on. Now the way this is organized, I'm circling with the cursor right now, readings, discussion assignments, online exercise composition assignments. I'm going to show you a little bit more as I scroll down this arrow in just a second as to how this is organized. You can even put a banner up here, a page banner, that you compose to be representative some way related to the material that you're going to cover in this unit. So here if I scroll down is another one of these techniques illustrated. This is embedding videos that other people have made coming straight from YouTube. YouTube gives you the code to do this as do other video hosters but YouTube has an advantage. People have already put out millions of potentially relevant videos and I was able to find several videos here to illustrate this particular unit and other units. In fact very fine resources that other instructors, students and the various commercial entities have put out there and they're free. They're already there and you can embed them in Blackboard or in Desire to Learn in exactly this way to make them play right here rather than having people chase out to YouTube and potentially get distracted by other kinds of things that are presented there. An engagement exercise. Further down on that one page for Unit 1 is an exercise that's built using what's called a testing or quizzing facility, but I certainly don't use it for tests or quizzes. Instead, I let the students take these carefully constructed five question exercises any number of times in the second week in a unit. And by arranging these as a series of true-false questions after a statement and including a graphic from whatever material is being covered in this part of the exercise, I can make this a really interesting thing for students to work through. Blackboard helps me by randomizing the sequence of the questions and the sequence of the responses. And by setting the grading in such a way that 
all of the true-false check marks have to be entirely correct, no partial credit, it's all or nothing, and letting students take this multiple times, I can get them to engage with the materials presented in this way with this automatically graded homework and give them feedback on what to review for anything that they miss. They can take this any number of times and I can watch in the grade audit trail as the students who care enough about their grade to spend time on this progress upward in their grade and in their knowledge and understanding. A little research I've done in the past on this indicates a very clear correlation between the amount of time spent on these exercises and the overall course grade, even if this doesn't count for very much. But I do make it count for a lot. I make this exercise count for half the grade of the unit. And in this way, I get a lot of feedback very early in the term, as little as two weeks into the term, on who is participating and invest the effort to work their grade upwards to a perfect score of 100 on the exercise and who might take it once or twice and settle for a mediocre grade. I can then focus attention on the people who are lagging behind in their performance in this way. I think this is one of the most marvelous features of distance learning. Once again, don't think about using this for quizzes one time through. You miss the point. The point here is to use this as a tool that you can only gain electronically to get students to engage with your material. And so here's a little rundown on how you can do those engagement exercises. I usually create five to eight multiple answer questions. That's the terminology in Blackboard. There's something similar in Desire to Learn. Ten true-false selections per question, and all ten true-false must be correct for any credit. You have to give feedback on a question telling what to review if they don't do it perfectly, and let the students do it any number of times in the second week of the unit, or for at least a one-week period if you organize your course differently. And that's the key. You let students do this any number of times. It's entirely up to them. And lastly, it really helps to seek anonymous feedback. This is an external link button that you put up. The URL points to a place where you've used DePaul's free quick data tool to publish a short survey. And it doesn't have to be very complex. All I put up here was two questions. Give me any kind of free form feedback and a check mark a box in front of any statement that you agree with. This is entirely anonymous submission. It's collected up in a spreadsheet that you can view as the originator of this. And it only takes about 20 minutes to learn how to use quick data to do this. I would strongly suggest doing this all through the course. It gives students a way to vent their spleen on anything they're concerned about. It certainly gives you much more input than you're likely to get from the end of course evaluations. And it makes it easy to do mid-course changes things that you can tune up that might be getting in students way for learning. I just find it an excellent technique and very easy to accomplish with an extra button like this that you add in the Blackboard. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them for you and show you how to do any of these things. You can email itd at depaul.edu or visit our website www.itd.depaul.edu where you can see materials that are related to these things and can help you get on board using these techniques as quickly as possible. Thanks a lot. My name is Jim Janesey. I'm one of the many people here in ITS who are here to serve you.